Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> it's a busy day today. This is Joyce. Um, how are you guys? Joyce knows who done it. Today I'm very excited to look into this particular person. We know this person has passed away, but I'm really excited to look into this person. By the way, that's the Buddha behind me, so please don't email me about somebody's watching over my shoulder or something, because it's not. Okay. Anyways, um, this is Elvis Presley. We know Elvis Presley has passed away. We know this was not murder, um, but we don't know why, what, what, what was going wrong. And so I wanted to look into that a little bit. Let me just first start off by saying that I absolutely loved Elvis Presley, you know, <laughs> and I was a little girl, I, honestly, um, but I loved his music. Oh my goodness. I loved his movies. I remember like on Saturday nights when, when we were young and there wasn't anything to do, we'd say, oh, let's watch a movie. And I'd always say, oh, I hope it's the Elvis Presley movie on. <laughs> I had the biggest crush on him. But, you know, I mean, he was super duper handsome. Let's face it, super duper handsome, super sexy, all of that, uh, that super Capricorn energy, that solid, strong uh, individual. In fact, I even remember uh, the day he passed away and I was working at Sears, Sears Roebuck. Um, I was, I had just turned 17, 17 in June because he died in August of 77. And uh, I know it was a Saturday because I always have to work during the week. Um, you know, as a teenager, high schooler, you work in the evening. So I used to work four to nine, like three or four days a week during the week. And uh, Saturdays, I would work, you know, an afternoon, like noon until three or noon to, you know, one to six or whatever. Anyways, um, my dad and my brother picked me up from work. I'll never forget. You know how things just stay in your mind. And so we're riding down our street, this busy street to get to our house. And my brother turned around to the back seat. And I even remember he didn't turn like this way towards the window. He turned, you know, towards the middle of the car. And that's where I was sitting. And he knew how I loved Elvis Presley. And he said, Joyce, you know what? And I'm like, what? Now, he's he's uh, six years younger than me. So he was maybe 10, 9, 10, something like that. He's all, but he had this happy sound to his voice. So I said, what? Elvis Presley's dead. I'm like, shut up. You are lying. I said, Paul, you are lying. That is not true. And then I remember him saying, Dad, didn't Elvis Presley die? Did he die? And my dad was all matter of fact. Yeah, he died. And I was shocked, shocked. Uh, I think my dad even turned to a radio station that announced it or whatever. Shocked and devastated is the feeling that I had. Even at 17, I, uh, yeah. Even because that would have been after the time that he gained weight. So that's how much I used to like Elvis Presley. I really did. He and Michael Jackson for me were like um, really up there. And and they were similar in their deaths, by the way. I'll just put that out there. So um, today I'm going to look at Elvis. I'm going to look at his mother. And I think I'm going to look at Tom Parker. I just want to see what was it in Tom Parker that kept push, push, pushing. So Elvis was born in Tupelo, Mississippi uh, on January 8th. And um, at the age of 18, at 13, excuse me, his family moved to Memphis, Tennessee. Now this family was very impoverished. I'll put it like that. Very impoverished, very broke. And um, Elvis, you know, he was in high school. He struggled to get through, but he really wanted something more than that he really loved music he especially loved soul music okay gospel gospel so in 1954 basically that's when his music career started and he was down at sun records um he actually was playing the guitar and everything at that time and the producer sam phillips was happy to have him there because sam wanted someone that would help him to expose more african-american type music to a wider white audience and being that Elvis had this natural soul in his voice, anything he sang would sound very soulful in anything. So some time passed and after that, Colonel Tom Parker comes along. Now Colonel Tom Parker was really like a carnival barker type of guy. You know, he was a guy 
Um, he's got a Mercury in Gemini, so he's a genius. I'm telling you, he's got the gift of gab and his mind works quick. And so um, he shows up on the scene. Here's Elvis. And he decides to make a deal to get Elvis out from under Sun Records. And he got him signed with RCA Victor. And Tom knew that he had the golden calf, period. Now, in 1956, um, Elvis made his first hit, which was Heartbreak Hotel. If you've ever seen that video, I love it. It's still up on YouTube. Check it out, Heartbreak Hotel, where they're in the jail gear dancing with the bars and stuff. Fantastic video. Um, and I think that's like one of the first ever, yeah, music videos. Yes, it is. So he made that. And then also in 1956, Tom Barker uh, got him connected with Hollywood and he made his first film Love Me Tender which was actually a big hit and Elvis loved the movies not only did he make the movie but he also did a soundtrack for the movie now by 1958 though um, everyone thought that Elvis Presley was going to be cut short because he was drafted into the army and being a dutiful Capricorn which he was of course he would go and you know be there for his country and so he did he actually got shipped off to Germany. Now, he says that he liked basic training. That was, I was interested. He said it wasn't that hard for him. It was really easy. But it was actually when his tour of duty started, his job, um, that's when he didn't like it so much. Uh, it was a lot of working outside. And Germany, of course, is very cold. It's like northern Midwest states, Canada. A um, lot of cold, a lot of outside. Um and he had to do, uh, he had to be up a lot of time, um, especially even at nighttime. He had to be up and he had to be working. So that was his first um, step into prescription drugs. He was prescribed barbiturates to help him be able to stay up and do, do his duties. Also at this time, he met a beautiful 14-year-old girl, Priscilla Presley. I'm sure everyone has seen her pictures from when she was 14, just the most gorgeous teenager you want to ever lay your eyes on truly and he really liked Priscilla um, he liked her innocence um, and I don't want to say this like because some people will say well this one you know Harvey Weinstein or, or Trump or Epstein messed with young girls so did Elvis Pre Presley first of all we were in a completely different era that was first of all he never spent time with Priscilla on dates alone he also like Priscilla's mom and so um, they got to be very close so Ellis said well when we go out you go out with us so it was always a chaperone situation they just weren't out fool la la and around that didn't happen Ellis just wasn't like that with Priscilla he, he looked at her as particularly special and pre precious even though he had been in Hollywood and dated some of the top Hollywood stars of the time now, much of the 60s he spent making movies, he'd make the movies, and he'd also make the soundtrack for the movies. Uh, and he liked it to a point, but it turned out that it wasn't what he thought it was going to be. He wanted to be in more serious movies. In fact, King Creole, which is actually one of my favorite movies, um, besides Blue Hawaiian, uh, uh, Blue Hawaii, not Blue Hawaiian, that's a cocktail. But anyways... Um, King Creole and that was a fantastic movie and he was able to show more range in his acting and he loved that movie but he was tired of this formula Tom Parker on the other hand loved it because it was a twofer Elvis would make the movies he could pay for that Elvis would make the soundtrack he'd be paid for that and um, Elvis no because it got to be really the same formula and now as an adult and I think back on it it was it was you know, here is the, the band or the singer, here is the girl, the boy meets girl, girl doesn't like boy, um, but they end up together, and Elvis has a number of songs that he does in the movies, and he was real tired of that formula, so when his contract ended, he was done, he walked away from that. So then he took seven years off from, um, from doing much of anything. Now, in 1968, he wants to make a comeback, and he did a television special, which was the first time, that's another first, that anyone had done a, a musical artist a special, a live. It was live, and it was called Elvis Live. And oh my goodness, I know you remember that. That's when he had that black leather outfit on. I still remember that. And it was fantastic. And I remember my friend, her name was Kim Black, 
And her mother loved Elvis too. And uh, Tom Jones, of course, everybody loved Tom Jones. But I remember she was saying to me that when her, because my mom watched it and we watched it and her mom and they watched it and they were, we were talking about her mother. She said her mother had the TV turned all the way up and was screaming, screaming, screaming <laughs> through the concert. So he had a real impact on ladies. Um, it was his cool, I think. His just Some people just have it. He had the true it factor. And I think he did this live to see if he still had that it factor. Um, he also did some TV shows. There's a special that's also on YouTube where he got on the Frank Sinatra show. Frank wanted to get tap into some of Elvis um, audience of youth and Elvis wanted to tap into some of um, Frank Sinatra's uh, individual, his people. So they did this this great duet. It is on YouTube and it is um, Sammy Davis Jr. is on there, uh, Elvis, uh, Frank Sinatra, but it's the duet with Elvis and um, and Frank Sinatra that is just, sorry guys, I'm readjusting, but that was just fantastic. So please check that out on YouTube. It's on there. So after he does the live, um, Elvis uh, gets a residency in Vegas because it was such a big hit. Everyone had saw that on television and, all, and of course the audience was live in Vegas. So he gets a residency. Now this is just up Tom Parker's Avenue because he, I'm telling you, was was a gambler and so much so that he would get uh you know credits to play you know he would play on it wouldn't be on the house per se but he'd get a vance to play he would lose that and then he'd go get more money to take care of it and then in 1977 elvis does another live that was very popular and it was aloha from hawaii and that's the one where he's in the white outfit and then he has the lay on and all of that that was another good one but before that, um, now he got with what was called the Memphis Mafia, which included two of his stepbrothers, because at this time, um, um, his mom had passed away. His mom passed away in 1968. And um, they say that Ellis never recovered from that particular blow. Um, she died of a heart attack while he was still in the service. Um, and also, um, which I failed to mention, is that he, at, at his birth, um, Elvis Aaron Presley had a twin, Aaron Elvis Presley, and they were, he was stillborn. So he was born or stillborn at 4 a.m. and then Elvis came second at 4.35, 4.35 a.m. And so he's experiencing these great losses. It was his brother, which that really affected him. Um, because they were twins. And so there's this bond, even inside uh, the mother's womb, if you know about twins, that starts right there with them. And then his mother passed, and that was absolutely devastating for him. He never was able to really shake that. Um, and then um, his divorce. Um, so in 1971, um, Priscilla, or excuse me, Elvis met a young woman. He was having an affair with her. She ended up getting pregnant and she aborted the child. But he had mentioned to her that he was thinking about leaving Priscilla, that he was going to leave her. Um, this is the this is what was happening. Priscilla had had in 1968, she had Lisa Marie. And Elvis loved Priscilla and he especially loved Lisa Marie. The problem, though, was that Elvis had this, I don't know, strangeness about him, I'll just put it like that, that once Priscilla became a mother, he didn't want to be as, you know, intimate or sexually active with her, like it was a desecration to do something like that to your mother, which was Lisa Marie's mother, it wasn't his mother, but that's how he felt, and this was an impact of the relationship that he had with his mother on him. Um, so Elvis would, I mean, he had numerous affairs before he got with Priscilla. He had numerous affairs while he was with Priscilla, and he continued on with that even when they were divorced. Now, in 1972, actually February 23rd, 1972, Priscilla makes an announcement to uh, Elvis that she wants to leave him. And this was devastating because it comes to find out that she was having an affair with a gentleman by the name of Mike Stone, who was Elvis's karate instructor because these two were spending a lot of time together because Elvis was now going on these major tours. Okay, so he was always gone 
And then when he was there, they weren't being as intimate as they should have been as a couple. Okay. Um, and because the Memphis Mafia, like I said, his two stepbrothers and some other people he knew growing up, they always stayed with Elvis, even staying in his house. So Priscilla never actually really got a chance to have this real natural marriage relationship with her husband, just the two of them to understand each other or whatever, because um, by the time that Priscilla came to the States, I think she was 16 or 17. And then when she got 21, they did get married. But you see, she was very young. And so she had to grow um, physically, but mentally, emotionally. And she wasn't going to be a little girl forever. And so she never got to, to grow with him in that way. Now, in October of 1973, um, they finalized the divorce between Priscilla and Elvis Presley. And again, like I said, that was another major blow to him. Um, so much so that he OD'd twice on barbiturates. And he even spent three days at least in a coma. Along with him being addicted to barbiturates, he also was addicted to Demerol. And that had put him in a semi-comatose semi state as well. Um, his doctor, and everybody that knows Elvis knows about his doctor, Dr. Nick, had said that in Elvis's mind, he wasn't a common street junkie because all of his pills, his prescriptions to wake him up, to put him to sleep, to keep him mellow, whatever, was prescribed by doctors. So that didn't make him like a common drug taker in his mind. Um, so he kept touring, but over the course of his touring, his health continued to decline. Um, he had... In fact, in 1973, he had went on 168 city concert, 168. Listen to that number. That's crazy. And then 1974, turned around and did another major tour. Um, and over the course of this time, uh, Elvis started putting on weight. OK, he was gaining weight at just rapidly. He'd gotten really um, just hugely obese, morbidly obese. There's even a story where um, Elvis was supposed to show up at this particular concert and the limo pulls up. They open the door for Elvis to get out. And he was so intoxicated with the drugs and his weight that he didn't walk out of the car. He fell out of the car down on his knees. Yes, on his knees. And so much so that his the Memphis Mafia friends tried to get him up and he made them leave him alone, leave me alone. He, he worked his way back up. He did do the concert, but he had to start it by holding on to the microphone stand like a cane or a prop just to stabilize himself to get through the concert. Um, now, he had a relationship about five to eight months after he and Lisa Marie uh, broke up, and that was with Linda Thompson. Um, and I think she went on and married um, Bruce Jenner, actually. Yeah. So, I don't know. But God bless her. Anyways, um, but that didn't last. So they broke up and then he got with Ginger Alden and Ginger was younger. And, and actually, he always picked women that semi favored Priscilla, if you ever notice. And Ginger was no, no exception. Now, Ginger was really excited because after two months of them being together, Elvis proposed and gave her a big rock diamond. Um, but his friends knew that, that he was never going to marry her because he had made a vow to them, his friends, to himself, um, that he would never marry uh, anyone ever again after what happened between him and Priscilla. Um, at a time, though, let me just say, his father had stepped in, um, Elvis's father, to try to get some of these Memphis Mafia people away. He even fired a couple of them just to kind of allow him to have some space and have a life of his own because Elvis was super generous, okay, overly so, almost like buying friendship. But like I said, he would buy, if you said to him, I love that Cadillac, and he'd be like, and in fact, he even said that to Wayne Newton. Let me just say that they met, they became friends, and he was talking about that Elvis bought him a car, or he would buy people a car, put it like that, and... um if you said, he, Elvis would ask you, well, do you like that car? How much do you really like that car? Oh, I love that car. It's the best car I ever had. Elvis would 
give you the keys and give you, if it was his car, he'd give you the keys for it. Or he'd give you the money for it. He'd go out and buy it and make sure that you got that car. He even did that with his housekeeper, the lady that would make his sandwiches, the um, peanut butter and banana grilled sandwiches. Um, he bought her a house. He bought her uh, cars. It was just him. And she, it wasn't her asking. He would just do that for people. Um, so in the end, Ginger... Uh, uh, said that they had decided they were going to take a nap because he had been up, up, up and taking this medication. So they had laid down to take a nap. And she says that she fell asleep thinking that he was falling asleep too. Now, when she got up the next morning, she realized that Elvis wasn't in the bed. So she goes to the bathroom in, that's in the bedroom. She knocks on the door, no answer, no answer. When she opens the door, she finds him in a seated position, but he's on the floor, uh, looking like he had been dead for a while. They did attempt to revive him, his friends and family and doctors, but to no avail. He had been gone for some time. Um, they said initially that he had a heart attack. You know, he died from a heart attack like his mother had. Um, but then when they started doing the op autopsy, they found 14... Uh, drugs in the system, one of them being codeine, which evidently he was semi-allergic to that as well. In further, uh, in 1984, they did another a look at the autopsy papers and they found that um, they realized they knew he had been sitting on the toilet. They knew that because of the amount of prescription drugs he had taken, he dealt with serious constipation and he had gone to use the bathroom. They said that what really happened was the amount of drugs in his system was um, culpable, for one. But in addition, in his attempt to pass his bowels, he was leaning on the artery in his stomach. And that caused him to go into a major heart attack. So I want to now take a look at, I guess I'm looking at family dynamics. So I'll be right back with you. All right, let's take a look at Elvis Aaron Presley. And his birthday was uh, January 8th, uh, 1935. Um, looking at uh, his life path, he was a number nine. And yeah, he was a number nine. He really cared about the people he cared about. Listen to what I'm saying to you. He cared about the people he cared about. He didn't, he wasn't like a regular nine where they care about most everybody. He cared about the people that he cared about because he kept a close circle. That number nine automatically tells you he will be known forever, okay? That gives you that quality that you make such an impression, good or bad, in life that you will be known forever. Even his January is a one and that eight is, uh, eight plus one is a nine also speaks to that same thing. That number one in his month that January tells me that he was either very spoiled and selfish or he was an only child. And in this case, he happened to be an only child because his brother didn't live. The number eight in the middle tells me he had money up the wazoo. And actually, he could handle his money. His uh, son is Capricorn. So one thing Capricorn know is about money. And they know how to handle money. They know how to be very frugal with things. They know what they can spend and what they can't. He was just a natural money magnet. Um, it didn't matter what he did. Can you imagine if he was alive this day, the way people get paid for doing little of nothing? How much more... Uh, how, how much more wealthy he would have been. Um, for that particular year, 1977, he was in a uh, number six personal year. So by the time he's, his birthday is in January, by the time August gets around, he's exhausted, okay? Because six is about taking responsibility, having duties, taking care of others. People know that they can rely on you. And Tom Parker was working him to death, okay? Regardless of his weight, gains and losses and even though he got to be extremely obese he still had to take care of everything because now he's got alimony he's got child support um, he's got these relationships that he's buying great things for and he's got to take care of himself plus the Memphis Mafia people around his dad you know all of that battery okay so as I'm looking at his um, birthday, he was born, like I said, January 8th, 1935 at 4.35 a.m. in Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, his rising is Sagittarius. So that speaks to him loving his freedom. 
that's why he was so into females and then all of a sudden traveling overseas. Sagittarius signs always means there'll be some overseas traveling or dreaming about overseas. In this case, he did go over to Germany. Um, he was very open and frank and frank and honest. He could even be blunt to people, like get to the bottom line, get to the point. Um, uh, let me see. There was restlessness with him, and um, you, with him, he was a type of person you couldn't take everything that he said personally because he would just say whatever came on his mind. His Capricorn speaks to his extreme uh, work habits. He was a worker. He was extremely dutiful and was extremely responsible. He had the utmost respect for Tom Parker, and that goes with that that kind of Capricorn energy. They're going to find somebody that's going to be a mentor or a leader, and they're going to be responsible to that particular individual. Um, he knew how to get ahead. He agreed with a lot of things that Tom Parker had him doing because he understood the nature of step-by-step -step and uh, the methodology of it all, the strategies of it all when it came to making movies and the soundtrack and doing these lives to reinvigorate his um his uh, career because it had dropped off where he used to be top of the pop charts he ended up on country and not as popular because music had changed so much um, but that didn't stop him from working he would take care of everyone and that is why with that Capricorn right there he would be really taking care of not only his parents but his managers his friends it was just like that is his job um, his Mercury is in Capricorn, his Venus is Capricorn, he's got a true stellum, so that means him, he was real Capricorn. He kept his circles very tight. He didn't have trust for people, period. Um, and so that he didn't, he didn't want to deal with everybody or be everybody's friend. He kept them very close. Um, he also, uh, being that stellum, that all that Capricorn, he would keep his emotions to himself. He looked like he could be a hard ass, excuse what I'm saying, but he did. He wasn't really but he was about his business. Um, and sometimes he didn't have this, uh, this stop, that's enough. No, he wanted to give. I think he just felt like all this happened to me. Let me share this with you. You are guys are my friends, you're my family, so let me take care of you. Um, one thing that sticks out for me is he had a moon in Pisces, um, which on one hand can be very good. Moon speaks to your emotions and your mother. And so that tells me right there that Gladys had some bit of emotional illness, psychological illness, mental illness. I am not a doctor. Don't play one on TV, but I'm telling you, his mother dealt with depression profoundly and not really knowing at that time how to deal with it per se, but she did. She did with it. Look at all her pictures and it'll, it'll tell you yourself. And now seeing the moon in Pisces, yeah, with him having it there, um, he was very intuitive. His mother was too. I bet she told him one day you're going to be a big star. And he kind of blew it off like, you know, how mothers do with their kids. But she was truthful. Um, he was a daydreamer. He could be oversensitive. Let me tell you some things about the moon in Pisces. Um, oftentimes they become addicts, okay? Whether it's drinking or pills or whatnot. And he was addicted to food. He was addicted to pills. Um, they have a tendency to want to withdraw. That is why he did have a home in Beverly Hills when it got too much or too Hollywoody because he wasn't that type of guy. He was very down to earth, extremely down to earth. Um, he'd have to withdraw back in Graceland where he can keep his circles small and keep the fence locked up and keep everybody out of this world. Um, these people have a tendency with this moon in Pisces to lose their self also in other people's problems. So it was good his father fired some of the Memphis Mafia, but he should have fired all of them. Because that was a group of people that would have a tendency to be negative. I'm not saying all of them were, but just when you when people are social, when they cluster together, it starts almost like the domino effect. I talk about something negative. Now you're giving your viewpoint and you're talking about it. And there's Elvis sitting in the midst of it. And that starts becoming a part of him. He absorbs that negative energy and he can start working from those negative places. Um, he would have a love of the arts. So, of course, he would love to act. Of course, he would love to sing. Um, 
practical things, tangible things, you know, the math and the sciences wouldn't have been as interesting to him as the arts. I bet he probably could draw as well. Um, he could find himself very over empathetic to a point where he would have burnout. Um, he also would suffer, suffer from self-indulgence, addictions, as well as being melancholy. So he would have suffered from depression as well. So now we're looking at someone who is the king. Someone who in the 50s was super good looking, felt nicely shaped, chiseled jaw, you know, the idea of everything to where he started like putting makeup on and dyeing his hair to be in the movies, um, obsessing about his appearance. And now he's becoming weight weighted down. He's taking these pills thinking that this is fine because the doctor prescribed him. Um, he wasn't a, an alcoholic, but he would drink. And this, like I said, this Pisces moon would make him very um, emotional, oversensitive, susceptible to everything. And not being really able to listen, that stubbornness of that Capricorn would cause him not to really want to listen to what people are saying. Um, but having this devotion to his mother, almost, I bet he dreamt about her with that moon in Pisces. I guarantee you he dreamt about her, her a great deal. Um, he had a Saturn in Aquarius. So that tells me that um, he, although he wanted to to um, think outside the box, do things different, like being a white man in the South singing with a African-American soulful voice, completely out of the box. Um, but a lot of times it was halted, for example, because um, that's that Saturn. It says, no, you got lessons to learn. You're going to have to learn to halt some of that free willing that you got, that free thinking that you have. Everyone's not going to agree. If you remember when you did the Elvis Presley episode, they only filmed him from the top up. That's that Saturn squashing his, you know, let me be me type of attitude. Um, let me look at Gladys. Uh, Gladys' birthday was four. 25 1912 so she was truly a capricorn uh, excuse me a taurus a taurus so she also was very stubborn about everything i i think that she had wanted to see elvis do well i think she jumped at it initially um because she's got a lot of aries energy aries in her mercury aries in her venus so she jumps at stuff and then kind of has second thoughts about it but that taurus energy for her would have made her very possessive of her things, okay? Very possess, very possessive of things. And him going off to Germany, him going off traveling around touring, it was like, I like the finer things in life because Taurus energy likes that. And she's got a Taurus in her son, Taurus and Saturn. She would have liked that, okay? But the fact that I got to give you up to the world, no, that really depressed her. But listen, um, she did suffer for de from depression, but at the same time, she could be domineering. Um, she's got a rising in Leo, so that could make her um, very uh, domineering, demanding even, um, arrogant even, um, as it came to her son and her husband. Like, she wanted them to toe the line, and um, Elvis and Tom Parker had something different in mind and they wanted him out and about. Um, yeah, so I see her, her life path was a number six. And so she also carried the responsibility more so than Elvis just that one year of his death, but she always had to be responsible for everything that happened in that house or everything happening to Elvis. Um, I see that her and Tom Parker looking at their birthdays, they didn't get along very much because she didn't like the way that you're taking my son away from me or you're making my son do this and that and I don't want him to do that. Um, Tom Parker's birthday was uh, June 26, 1909. And it's interesting because that speaks of him being having been responsible uh, in his early years as well. That two and that six in the middle says that um, he liked to to be with someone, but he wanted them to carry his burdens. It also speaks of his number eight, but his is a 26 eight. So that means that he was getting money in left and right, but he could not hold on to it. Um, his rising is in Libra. So he was uh, kind of compatible to Elvis in that sense. Okay, like uh, seemingly approachable or what have you. Um, his son was in cancer. So 
he kind of was hard to get close to. He, the cancers don't usually let people close to them like that unless they really trust them or care about them. Um, but he was super sensitive. He would snap, okay? That would cause him to be a little bit snappy, a little oversensitive. And so he and Gladys would have issues because she would come right directly at him while she was still around saying what she didn't like or didn't appreciate. And he, on the other hand, um, would do, I'm going to do it this way. His Mars is in Pisces. So this guy was, uh, let me just talk about his Mercury first in Gemini. So he was a true salesman, truly was a salesman. He was a salesman at a time in his life, uh, not actually selling, but um, Elvis was his product. But in addition, he was a Carney prior to that. So that's all about selling and the gift of gab. So he had that on lock. But his Mars and Pisces is very interesting because that would cause him to have deceptions. Okay. In other words, he would tell Elvis or he would tell Gladys whatever they wanted to hear. And then he would do everything behind the back that was to benefit or gain himself. That is just how he would have moved. Um, and, you know, talking you into this great plan, but it was really just to benefit him, just like having Elvis in the movies um, doing the soundtrack and the films that Elvis didn't like. He wasn't concerned about that, but he could talk Elvis into that. He would have already known that Mercury and Gemini, that Elvis would go along with anything that I say. So he knew that, like he was a master manipulator, master chess player, and he knew that. And then he would do his dirt, that Mars and Pisces, behind the back and sign contracts, put his Elvis's name on stuff or act like he had power of attorney to sign for Elvis and make an Elvis seem to other people as if he was a slow country kid and Elvis really wasn't. Um, in addition, he had a gambling addiction that uh, Mars and Pisces speaks of addictions and so his was gambling, his was drinking as well. So when I look at this and I, I didn't look at the father because the father was sort of not into that as much because it was Gladys who was the domineering factor in the house. I see that Elvis suffered greatly from depression. Elvis was a true addict. Elvis was self-destructive from the, pres the prescription medications he took, the food he was drinking, the different women he was with, his belief system that he could do anything with anybody at any time, but Priscilla you can't do anything. You have to sit at home and which that was fine when she was 17 or 18 or 21. But now she had become a woman and wanted a life. Um, he was truly devastated by his divorce, the death of his mother. His mother is the one that made him depressed, upset, hurt, guilty about his brother's death. He wouldn't have ever known that, that there was another child. Um, they even have a picture of his the other child's tombstone up there that you can see for yourself. Um, but his mother put the burden on that as well. So he carried a lot of responsibility. And that number nine life path says that he didn't just, he stood up on his own, true. But he always looked behind him. What's behind me? Who do I got to take care of? Who do I got to look after? His over generousness. And then combined with the fact that he was addicted and his mind wasn't sharp, People could talk him into anything. He was spending money left and right. He was bleeding out money from people. His estate didn't start making money until they opened it up for tourism. He was losing money greatly. But anyways, guys, that is the sad story of family dysfunction and Elvis Presley. Guys, share, subscribe, thumbs up. Give me a comment. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. Have a great day.